Hey everybody, so now we're in the studio and we're going to take a deeper dive into the development of this product and talk about applications, possible future applications, and just what was going on. So I have Bill Davis with me here, who is uh, the chief uh, design guru at, uh, at Vonden, shall we say. Uh, so tell us, talk to me about how this project started. Uh, absolutely. We saw where the marketplace was going with hybrid supercars and we were all just kind of car geeks and we're super excited about those specific vehicles. Uh, those would include like Porsche 918, uh, McLarens, Ferraris. I mean, there's everyone uh, is coming out with a, uh, a hybrid supercar these I'm days. I'm guessing you looked, you looked at the 918 and said, I don't have a million dollars, but I could I could turn my 911 into That's a 918. Right. So what, what could we do for the average Joe, if you will, that can, uh, can't afford a million dollar car? and uh, so we spent the last three years uh, developing Vaughn and Shadow Drive. And so this is the, the main motor unit. Um, and uh, tell me a little bit more about this development. Like how, did, how did you end up deciding to go with this form factor rather than some sort of crazy belt alternator starter, a attached system, something along those lines? Yeah, well, I can definitely say that this is not where we started. And... Um, it was interesting. Uh, it, it, <laughs> the proof of concept did exactly that, that we knew we were going the right direction, but it did uh, not motivate the car or, or therefore the driver <laughs> in the way that we needed it to. So um, we went to, back to the drawing board and uh, looked for other opportunities to mount motors in the car. And, and other people have looked at this too, like front axles and things like that. And, we Turned felt an, an, an NSX, an NSX electric, an electric front motor, and certainly a, as a retrofit kit that gets harder. But since our our goal was 100% to make this a retrofitable system, we had to look elsewhere. And of course, we identified the space inside the transmission bell housing, mm -hmm. and the what the key advantage of being there are, are, are twofold. Um, one, the large diameter can yield a high torque from a, a, a motor of this form factor mm -hmm. called an axial flux motor. And uh, the other is you get the torque multiplication of the transmission, like just like the engine does. And so that increases the wow factor from the driver's point of view significantly. So what are the disadvantages, I guess you'd say, for, for this particular motor style? I mean, you know, we, we do have this very compact packaging here. I would assume that obviously there may not be quite as much room for cooling. Uh, is this more expensive than, than a, a different format would be? It is more expensive and it does have to be custom made for each application because uh, you have a motor and transmission interface that mm -hmm. is unique to that vehicle or family of vehicles. Um, and so we have to uh, adapt the, the technology to fit these various applications. And uh, cooling, as you mentioned, is tightly squeezed inside. We, uh, we offer the max performance that this can, can give for a, uh, a, you know, a finite duration before the motor reaches its uh, temperature maximum and then it will quickly recover with the built-in liquid cooling. Um, if there was an infinite amount of space, we could do much more, mm -hmm. but we use the space that we have. And so what is, what is the future of something like this? I mean, you've been able to squeeze it behind uh, dual clutch transmissions, automatic transmissions, manual transmissions. Uh, you know, when am I going to be able to upgrade my, uh, my Jeep Trackhawk uh, to, you know, an extra 150 horsepower because 700 is not enough? That's right. Um, well, we're, we're stepping into the market carefully evaluating future opportunities on a case-by-case -case basis because, again, each one will take some development to adapt the system. Um, the next product in development right now is, uh, well, let me restate that the one before you <laughs> is for the uh, um, late model Porsche 911s, Boxsters, Caymans, uh, using their direct injection engine, 987.2 uh, and newer. So about 2000, a year 2009, yeah, Porsche-ish yeah, and forward? Right. Got it. That's right. And we're working on the uh, product for the older uh, classic 911s, the air-cooled motors. And there's a considerable amount of uh, excitement from that owner community for, for the availability of that product, which we estimate will be in the, in the spring time frame. 
Oh, cool. So that's so coming. That's coming pretty soon. Yeah. So then, then after that, any any other applications? This would be interesting in a truck, something along those lines. A lot, you know, extra low yeah. and torque to By start. Extra torque, you know, we. Uh, we have not identified the next vehicle that we'll be developing for, but you, clearly they should all write to you, write to you at vonin.com yeah, right. and tell you what uh, tell you what they should make. Um, so tell me this: so the power output of this one is 150 horsepower, 150 pound feet of torque, approximately, correct? Yes. Uh, and is that for all applications? Is it con relatively consistent? It is relatively consistent. Um, as the diameter gets smaller, it is more difficult to make that same torque. And mm -hmm. so the smaller products will likely be slightly less. Okay. Um, the power should be very similar if we use the same uh, size and chemistry of the battery. But um, uh, in some applications, say on a truck, maybe high power isn't needed. so we might use a smaller battery or something. Got it, okay. So what else goes into making this work? Clearly we have uh, this this motor here. What else goes into making the system go down the road? And what makes the, the, the package, how does it that you've you've created this so that it can be removed if you want it to be removed or or just easier to add? What, what was the logic behind that? Yeah, um, so the whole system includes uh, of course the, the motor, uh, the motor controller or otherwise known as an inverter. Uh, a battery pack that we've selected for its uh, high power density, which is high power, uh, low weight, and low volume, and uh, a system controller that we've developed to monitor how the whole system works and what the driver mm -hmm. demands are. Uh, the system controller I thought was really interesting because you've yeah. decided instead of putting additional displays into the car or, or really changing the car itself, everything is now separate, so you can use your phone to control uh, the features. This is our, our current uh, phone app for the iPhone, and uh, we have Android 1 in development now as well, but essentially the, uh, we can see the, uh, the selection of different modes mm -hmm. of operation, including uh, system off, or which can be used for a valet mode, or otherwise uh, demonstrating to, to people or your friends. Uh, what this, the car was like before the system was integrated and what it's like when it's turned on. And then different modes we call uh, stealth, sport, and overboost, mm -hmm. with overboost being the, um, the peak performance available from the system of the 150, 150 that you mentioned. Uh, stealth is more of a um, mid-throttle, mid-level torque, kind of an around town mode that makes the car feel uh, peppier. Like, uh, and then uh, sport mode is kind of like when you're out playing in the mountains or, or in your favorite mm -hmm. road and you want, uh, again, the car to be quicker and that uh, power to be available pretty much all the time because it uh, at that level it, it just rarely reaches its temperature maximum or anything, at least not uh, at levels achievable easily on the public streets. And of course, there'll be software updates via this app as well, you were, you were saying earlier. So um, that's part of the thing that I found intriguing here. So l tell me a little bit about the future of the app, where you see it going, and, and, and how it makes the system a little bit different than some other additive systems. So like if, we're, if you're going to go out and buy a, an ECU upgrade, it's not going to change uh, boost levels based on where you are on the track. So you, maybe you're getting a little bit of overheating here, or overheating there, or a little bit of heat soak where, uh, where it might not do you the most good. How, how have you been able to address that particular concern theoretically with, with this app? Yes, so um, being uh, software controlled, the system definitely um, can capitalize on that. And we have uh, some work in development where we will have uh, track specific uh, modes where for that specific racetrack, either predefined uh, uh, layouts or the user may be able to edit that as well for um, where on the track, the system will put out uh, how a certain amount of boost and for how long, and where the energy will be uh, regenerated under braking, etc. It's just to um, maximize the, uh, the lap time or maybe a push to pass functionality as well. I mean, the, the user can uh, can tweak the experience in, in several different ways. Interesting, and of course, if you're really interested in gear shredding performance, you could you could couple this with turbo upgrades or absolutely. ECU upgrades or whatever else absolutely. you want to do and you could just throw this on top so you want yep. absolutely everything. Yep. Alright, well thanks very much for talking to us about that. So again, if everybody wants to know more about this technology, there's going to be a separate video where we're just driving the car out on the road and taking a look around uh, the modifications in place. Uh, if you want to know more about everything else, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen and we'll see you all next week.